Renal denervation is the latest advance in the treatment of resistant hypertension. The intervention is being evaluated in the ongoing Simplicity 2 trial. 18-month data were reported in Munich. At the end of the six-month endpoint in the initially denervated group, pressure fell by 32 on 12, which was highly significant. Didn't fall at all in the reference population. Then when the initial group had been followed through to 18 months, the blood pressure fall was exactly the same, 32 on 12. Did the catheter cause any mischief? And in essence, no. Was there any deterioration of renal function? No. Was there any damage to the renal artery wall? No, there was no primary damage to the renal artery wall. The ESC 2012 Great Debate on Renal Denervation addressed some of the pros and cons of this new intervention. From animal models and from transplant surgery, we do know that renal nerves potentially might regrow. So um, there might be a functional re innervation of the kidneys, and thereby the question whether these blood pressure reduction sustains is open. There are more than 50 device companies now set out to conduct a new device to treat renal arteries in terms of denervating it from the sympathetic. We have the before mentioned radiofrequency thermal ablation, we do have cryoablation, we will get chemical denervation, we will get ultrasound, a very promising one. I would say the key is to reduce procedural time. Results of a meta-analysis which included the most recent trials on hypertension with mortality outcomes were presented in Munich. Overall, more than 150,000 patients were followed for more than four years. The main result is the reduction in total mortality with RAS inhibitor strategies of 5%. ACE-based trials demonstrated a significant reduction in total and cardiovascular mortality of respectively 10% and 12%, whereas ARBS-based studies did not demonstrate any benefit. For ACE trials, there was heterogeneity with more recent trials that use the highest dosages of perandopril with a significant reduction in cardiovascular mortality of 12, 22%, whereas other pioneering trials using usual dosages of older ACE inhibitors did not demonstrate that benefit. In terms of risk factors, high blood pressure is the number one killer. But can we prevent hypertension by early intervention? We have this huge rise in number of hypertensive people in the world. So somehow we should try to figure out how we could prevent people from developing hypertension. OK, so it should initiate more research. But we should also be very uh, careful and alert about these people with high normal blood pressure or prehypertension because most of them, 50, 60, 70 percent, will develop established hypertension with even higher risk after four, five, six years.